All right, so my friends, welcome. A special edition of Bronze to Mythic. This is my Pro Tour draft recap. Of course, I've been in Spain for the Pro Tour for a week now, and now I'm home. I did two drafts of the Pro Tour. They both didn't go great, honestly, but thankfully I was able to pull it together and constructed. Uh, I went two and four in draft, but eight and two in constructed. Q for Worlds and two Pro Tours. I'm queued for Worlds. I mean, next two Pro Tours are super exciting, obviously, and Worlds will be in September. Uh, it's Wilds and Eldraine, Draft and Standard should be really, really cool. But I want to go over my draft decks and talk about my, about my drafts and how they went. And uh, we're going to do that right now because that's what we're going to do here uh, here on the Bronze and Mythic Draft Review. So here is my first draft deck. And uh, it ain't super pretty, honestly. So draft starts and uh, I'm at a table with, um, I think it was like Shouda and Takahashi. So two good Japanese pros. No other names are recognized, really. And uh, in our draft testing, it was very, very clear black was the best color, you know, and the conclusion we kind of we kind of drew from our limited meetings was that basically you're black until you're not, you know, you should be going into every draft. So assuming that you're black, it is the deepest color by far and definitely the best color. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, everyone knows this, obviously, which is kind of uh, kind of scary. Um, but so open my pack. I don't recall exactly what was in the pack. Uh, but there was a claim the precious, and then you know maybe a few other things. I don't recall exactly, honestly. But it's funny because personally, I don't love being black because you're always fighting over it really, really hard. I prefer to try and find the open deck. Um, and again, green considered the worst color, definitely not the worst color. I think white's the worst color. Uh, greens are you know a really, really good you know uh, way to kind of backdoor and fix your draft things go wrong. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. So first, my claim the precious, and then I see. Literally zero black cards for the rest of pack one, except for one Urukai Berserker. Like actual zero. So I second like pick like a Rosy Cotton or something like that. Um, I took a Boromir, like pick four over the Berserker. Uh, ended up with some green cards late, you know, and ended up, uh, there's a quick beam, also like fifth pick, I think. So end of pack one, I have one Claim the Precious, it's my only black card. I've got, you know, Rosy, Boromir, Quick Beam, a smattering of, you know, red, of green and white cards. Not a great start. You know, Black got cut, wasted a first pick. Kind of honestly fairly typical of my Pro Tour testing house drafts as well. Pack two, what do we open? Oh, it's Helix! Oh my god! But the Witch King of Angmar, one of the literal best rares of the set. Now, at this point, this is a really important inflection point in my draft because... I know what black's not coming from the left. However, black is the deepest color. And I passed literally zero black cards except for one Urukai Berserker in pack one. So black should be coming in pack two, right? And which one of the best cards in the set? I already have a Claim the Precious, you know, and we can just be green, black, splash, maybe, and kind of figure it out. Card quality is too high. You can't not take Witch King here, honestly. So take the Witch King, get past the pack with a Nazgul in it. <laughs> Bing, All right, right. Nazgul, one of the best on commons in a set. Pretty awesome. Take the Nazgul. Maybe, maybe, maybe Black is back on the menu. You know, it's so. Um, Looks like meat back on the menu. Boy. Third pick, get past the pack of Torment of Gollum in it. One of the best Black commons. So excellent. So okay, maybe Black's back on. Maybe Black's back on. You know, so maybe we're good to go here. And uh, considering kind of Black White, maybe maybe Green Black, and then there are no more Black cards. <laughs> Maybe I got like a green with worm tongue, you know, like later or whatever. So pick up a few green cards, got a late old man willow. Um, you know, many parties or two. Again, many parties late is kind of like your your backdoor plan where like things aren't working out. Take a many parties or two and just try and put it all together. Try and figure it out, go from there. So gotta be parties, if you watchdogs. Pack three, uh, no block cards really. I mean, I did a Den Thor. Made sure you get the fixing. So, you know. The deck is a little ugly. You know, we're almost just like three colors. You know, we're basically green, black, splashing white. Uh, we, do, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white cards, you know. But between the, the two many partings, Wizard Rockets, Shire Scarecrow, Inherited Envelope, a lot of ways to fix here. Obviously, we're kind of glutted up on three. Obviously, we're a little light on removal spells. But this deck is not the worst, you know. I think that, like, as far as salvaging a bad draft goes, uh, this deck ended up being, you know, kind of fine. Honestly, not, not the worst. So, uh... Where I want to play against a blue-red deck. Excellent, excellent blue-red deck. Could not have been better against my deck. Uh, we can see here the, uh, the actual like, run of the event. Um, I can load this up. So I played against... Uh, where I want to play against 
uh, Julian Jakovic, and uh, his deck was just an excellent, excellent blue-red deck with two horses of Berberine or whatever, the bouncy creatures, and two Soothing Smeagles, which are both excellent against my big, dumb, idiot green deck, got obliterated. Cast Witch King game two, it was smited. Just everything that could go wrong went wrong, get obliterated. Uh, play against Reed Alexander round two, unable to win a match against his, um, he was a like green-white. Um, I don't remember exactly. Just kind of like, you know, just was an okay deck, wasn't great. Uh, take it down. And then play against Yu, Yu Takahashi in round three. Unfortunately, Takahashi, you know, obviously a very, very good player, went 1 1. So, tough matchup in round three when you're 1 and 1. He had a, a blue green deck uh, and was able to take down a pretty close match. Uh, games were close. I'm all good both games. The, the draft was kind of just rough, honestly. I'm all good a lot. Uh, you know, my deck wasn't particularly great, obviously. And, uh, you know, ended up with a 1 2. Not thrilled about it. You know, the Pro Tour is hard, basically. You know, I think his deck is, you know, fine. You know, if I got seven wins with this deck in a, in a, a Bronze Mythic episode, I wouldn't be that surprised. The deck just has a lot of power to it. But at a Pro Tour, you know, where you need, you need every edge, wasn't quite good enough. Would have loved to scrape a 2-1 with this deck, but ended up going 1-2. So that was the first draft. Uh, ended up 4-4 on day one. Not a very great start, obviously. Sit so down in draft pod number two, and I have a teammate to my right. I've got Sam Party to my right. Uh, Shout Soka also in the pod as well. And Sam, in our, our practice drafts, was clearly adamant that he is black. Like, he black-red, he forced black-red almost every draft. You know, uh, his first draft, the PT was black-red. You know, so, like, he he is going to be going black, you know. And um, I look at my opening pack, and there was a March of the Black Gate and not much else. Pretty hard to not take March of the Black Gate. So I take March of the Black Gate, and Sam passes me a Rangers of Athelion, a Claim the Precious, with an Uncommon Missing. Now... In our limited meetings, you know, we have we, we talk a lot about the value of cards relative to other cards, you know. And with an uncommon missing, the Ranger's still there and the Claim the Precious is still there. The card he took based on our, our limited meeting has to be either Fear Fire Foes or Aomir. Uh, those are two cards that are, you know, we're ahead of those cards, ahead of Claim the Precious, but behind, you know, and ahead of Rangers of the Alien uh, as uncommon. So, pretty sure he took a red card. Uh, and then also with his predication to want to go black. I'm pretty happy to take Rangers here. Uh, Rangers is an excellent card, obviously. I did first pick the March of the Black Gate, but Rangers is excellent. It's a super, super high-quality card. It's better than uh, Clean the the Precious is. Take the Rangers. Take Rangers. Don't see much black, obviously. So once again, first pick the black card. Don't get many many black cards in general. And kind of like bounce around a little bit. Uh, A lot of blue cards in pack one. The blue is the one card that was really open. Uh, You know, Birthday Escape, uh, Bat Song, et cetera, et cetera. Pick up a few late Mirror Mirror Guardians and many partings in uh, in pack one. So I'm um, kind of like a lot of blue cards, a couple green cards, a bit black card, so on. So pack two open Horn of Gondor. It's foil. I have it right here. I'm going to see it. I mean, obviously, pretty lucky. Open a foil Horn of Gondor. Uh, it's kind of cool. So take the horn, which is obviously great. Uh, more blue cards. Blue is the one thing that was obviously open. Uh, and then a few late green cards again. So now I'm out of this like interesting blue green deck where I'm not really scrying. Of course, the blue green scry deck has been pretty bad for you know most people. Um, you know, it's a deck that it just like doesn't really come together, kind of hard to work. But if you're blue green tempt, you're just playing a lot of good blue green cards. You know, we have uh, you know mirror mirror guardian and birthday escape. Get the whole tempt thing going. Uh, you know that can work out reasonably well. Also, we have good card draw here. We're lacking removal because we're a blue-green deck. We have Mirkwood Spider. Unfortunately, didn't get any fight cards, uh, which is like the big miss with this deck. Uh, Stuvaconis would have been great also. Uh, but pick up a fall of Gilgalad. And then pack three. Uh, pack three was pretty nice for us. We get a Schmeagle and a uh, Shelob pass from Sam, which is great for a good splash. We get a late Arwen. And this deck ended up being kind of fine, honestly. So we have this kind of weird like blue-green deck. Uh, a lot of card draw. A lot of ring temp, which is great, obviously. A huge bomb in Horn of Gondor. Um, you know, I have a few extra humans as well. We have the Survivor, and then we have the uh, the Knights, which I would normally not play. Uh, but it was a human for the Horn as well, which is like, there's a lot of card draw in the deck. And then the Rangers also. So three humans alongside the Horn of Gondor, which is great. Uh, we have a few, you know, a big rare here in Shelob, which is nice. Rangers is obviously great too. A ton of card draw, a ton of ring temps. And uh, hop on over to our, uh, to our results here. And uh, not unhappy with the deck, honestly. First round, I play against uh, we play against Derek uh, Bil- Bilata. And uh, Derek was a- another blue-red deck. And uh, I think I could have played game one better. Uh, against Derek in game one, I had a Lorien revealed in my hand that I could have land-cycled a few times, but I kind of wanted to hold on to it. 
Uh, but Derek's deck was very, very tempo-y. And then all of a sudden you cast uh, there and back again on turn five. So that was like, is this like 6-6 six, six dragon waiting to? And like, I just kind of like got tempoed out in game one. And I feel like if I had like cycled the Lorien earlier and I could have maybe won the race, game two, Mulligan to six, only played Islands, got crushed, didn't even play a game, which obviously sucks, you know. Uh, round two, I play against uh, Satoshi Nakayama. Um, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, he was a green-white deck. He was just like green-white, triple Frodo, you know, just like an okay green-white deck. Couldn't get through my spiders. Won that round pretty easily, honestly. It was a pretty easy match. Uh, and then the last round, I am paired against Shouta Yasoka. Um, and then we sit down, and they announce the pairings are wrong. Gonna get a repair. So, um, dodge bullets, you know, pretty good. Ended up playing against, uh, I'm not gonna try and say it. Uh, and unfortunately, my opponent's deck was, uh, was not, like, great. He was green-black. Um, I win game one. Uh, I'm sorry. Game one, he went, like, double March. Like, turn one March, turn two March, and just kind of, like, crushed me. And then game two, I'm able to kind of pull out of it. And I win game two. And then game three, he cast the Bowmasters. And if you look at my deck list again, uh, I have no way to really remove a Bowmasters. And I've got like a dozen card draw spells, you know, birthday escape, birthday escape, liberation, deliberation, flashback, flashback, um, you know, uh, the bat song, Lorien revealed. And then I also ring tempt a ton. So I'm almost always drawing card when I attack too. So Bowmaster, one of the best cards in the format, one of the best cards against me in the format. I can't really remove it. So unfortunately Bowmaster in game three, I just could not beat it. I had to do like discard. A, I had to discard a bath song to a ring loot. That's how bad, how bad things were. Uh, and I lost game three, and I was pretty bummed. So I think that both my decks, while not pretty, were fine. I think I could have 2 one reasonably, um, reasonably well with either one of them. Uh, but again, it's Pro Tour. Pro Tours are very, very difficult. You know, uh, I, I definitely think my draft prep this event was not as good as it could have been. Um, I, I definitely decided that I didn't really like fighting over black. Um, in our house drafts, kind of the same thing. And I really loved the green decks. You see here, I actually have the, I, I drafted a full play set of mini partings. You can see I got, I had two in the first deck, two in the second deck. So I have my full play set of Pro Tour stamped mini partings. Uh, and I love this card. You know, I love the green decks. You've seen it on a stream or whatever, you know. Um, and I think that I should have been a little more focused on what I wanted to do. Um, you know, like for example, Ilya Cassis like the red white deck. Drafted it a lot, did pretty well with it, you know. And I wish I, I wish I had just drafted more, tested more, honestly. I feel like I was just a little behind overall. Um, you know, uh, I I almost regret first making black cards, honestly, but it is what it is, obviously. Those are my two drafts. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thankfully, I won the last five rounds on day two to finish 10 6. Q for the Q for World, Q for two Pro Tours, which is great. Uh, and I loved, I love, love, love doing high level limited. Uh, it's very, very different, uh, I will say. I think that I should have done some moto drafts. It was very, very different drafting at the Pro Tour and drafting in the, in the, in the, the testing house uh, than it is on Arena, uh, where on Arena, you just get whatever you want, whatever you want it, basically. But in our testing house drafts and in our Pro Tour drafts, again, Black was so contested that, you know, it was just fighting for the scraps all the time. And it's funny because Takahashi, he went 2-1 beating me in the first draft with a blue-green scry deck. He had, like, four Ents Furies. And then I saw him laying out his deck after the second draft. He had five Ents Furies. So he was blue-green again. You know, it's not about like his, like his plan or whatever, but I wish I had more of a plan, honestly. And I'll work on that for Worlds, I think. Um, I need to do some more, uh, some more, uh, some more, probably Magic Online drafts where the players are, you know, better on average. And then more uh, paper drafts as well. Uh, because it's just important to, uh, it's important to be able to mimic the conditions of a Pro Tour draft. And Arena does not do that. Uh, you know, when you do an Arena draft, even in Mythic, you know, your draft pod is randomly seated with just eight random players. It could be, like, five bronze players, a gold player, and a platinum player, or whatever, you know? And they're just not going to value the cards well enough to give you an accurate experience of what it's like at the Pro Tour, where you're you're just fighting for scraps a lot of the time. So, that was my Pro Tour draft. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the review, obviously. Uh, bronze Mythic on the YouTube will return to regularly scheduled programming uh, next time this episode, episode, next time episode, episode, next time an episode is supposed to go up. It's been a long week, folks. All right. So on stream, we're going to keep going. But YouTube folks, love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of my decks and how it went. Hit that like button as always. And appreciate it.